In this problem, we're given an exponential equation and we're supposed to solve it graphically. The equation is f of x equals 140 times 1 1.03 raised to the x. We're supposed to find the input x that gives us an output f of x of 210. Since f of x is equal to 210, you could replace the notation f of x with the number 210 and you'd get an equation that looks like this. 210 equals 140, 1.03 to the x. Whenever you try to solve an equation like this using the graphing calculator, you do so by taking one side of the equation, for example 210, and putting in your y1, the right hand side of the equation into y2. So turn your calculator on, clicking the on button, you should see a cursor. Click the y equals in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to type in 210 as my first equation, so 2, 1, 0. You can either press enter or you can down arrow to the next line. As a second equation, I'm going to type in the right hand side of the equation, 140, so 140, left parentheses right here, 1.03, right parentheses. To get that raised to the x power, we use the caret key right here. The x key is located right here. This is basically what I need to do before graphing. Let me move this over and see that it says set your window as follows. So to make sure that we see the two curves, we need to make sure that our viewing window is set correctly. So to change the window, go here and click the window button. You don't need to delete the old settings, you can just type over with the new numbers. For example, we want the x bin to be negative 5. So I'm simply just going to click the negative button, which is the white button down here. Don't use the subtract key. So negative 5 either press enter or down arrow. We want our x max at 16, so type 16. Go down twice to the y min, change it to 90. The y max needs to be 220. Now this is something you don't have to do, but notice that my y scale is one unit. This tells the calculator to put a tick mark every one unit. But we're going from 90 to 220. That's going to be an awful lot of tick marks. What's going to happen is our y axis is going to look really thick. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to go down and change that to something more reasonable like 10. Now when I graph it, the Y scale will have tick marks every 10 units. Let's hit graph. My emulator is extremely slow, so you have to be patient. The emulator graphs in colors, which your calculator probably does not. But here it comes. We're going to see that the graph actually has an intersection point up here, and that's what we're trying to find. Notice the Y axis has tick marks spaced apart about 10 units. You didn't need to do that, but it does look nicer than having a big solid bar with hundreds of tick marks. Now that I have the two equations graphed and I can see the intersection, I can find the intersection by going to my calc menu right here. Mine looks blue, so I need to hit the blue button. Your calculator might be yellow or some other color, but either way, you hit the second key, then the trace key. The intersect feature is option 5. You can scroll down and press enter. I'm too lazy. I like to just press 5, so I'm going to press 5. The calculator does not know that you only gave it two equations. For all it knows, you gave it 10, and it wants to know which two of the 10 you want to find the intersection of. So it says first curve. It has the first equation there. I tell it that that's the first curve by just pressing Enter. Then it asks, is this the second curve? And it displays the second equation we typed in. You say yes by pressing Enter again. Now it wants me to guess where the intersection is. This really is only necessary if there's multiple intersections on the same screen. You really can just press Enter, and you'd be done with the process. It really wants you, though, to move to the right. Again, I'm too lazy to click to the right arrow many, many times, so a faster way to move to the right is to hit second right, second right, and it moves you there quickly. But it turns out I don't really need to do this. In fact, I'm just going to press Enter and put my guess here at x equals 11, which isn't even really close. When I press Enter, the calculator runs a little process and tells me the intersection is about 13.72. The directions are to write the point of intersection as an ordered pair below, round the value of x to two decimal places. So down here in my point of intersection, I'm going to write left parenthesis. My x value to two decimals is 13.72, comma, the y value of course is 210, and then right parenthesis. The next thing it says to do after writing the point is step three, use the line tool to draw the horizontal line y equals 210. So I'm going to scroll down and use the line tool. Here's the line tool. I need to graph y equals 210, which is basically a horizontal line like this blue line through 210. 
So I'm just going to click at about 210, make sure that my line looks horizontal, holding the mouse button down, moving, and then letting go. There's the horizontal line 210. The next step is to use the exponential tool to draw the exponential function. So remember the exponential function has a y-intercept of 140, has a growth factor that's bigger than 1, 1 1.03, which means it's growing. This is why the red curve was increasing over here. What is difficult to see on the graph over here, though, is that its start value is 140. So what I'm going to do is go down here and click on the exponential tool, plot a point at 140, again, clicking but holding the mouse key down, and then I'm going to move up and put it up here on the line here and draw my exponential function. It would be nice to actually draw the second point at the intersection, which is over here at roughly 13.7 which is about right here, comma 210. Probably not necessary. You probably could pick any point in the line. I'm just trying to be careful. Then step five says use the point tool to identify the point of intersection. Here's the point tool. So I already did it, but I'm going to actually plot a point at 13.72, comma 210, which is about right there. And I'm going to submit my answer to see if I got it correct. It says I've got 0.5 plus 0.5, which is 1 out of 1. So basically that's